he was a great guy and uh, you know he's from Harlem and you know when you get signed with creative arts agency with CAA they do what they say is like sending you out to the world mm -hmm. and literally I would have you know four or five meetings you know sometimes maybe four or five meetings a day but generally in the area of two or three meetings a day and one of the first people I met was George and Doug and I admired them from producing things like Delirious with the Fat Boys and you know Crush Groove and New Jack City and we immediately, yeah, <laughs> gotta love them, man. So, uh, you know, we immediately like clicked, and they we came up with this great idea about doing a western, and they had a deal with Warner Brothers, and we pitched it, and Warner Brothers didn't get it and didn't like it, and we always had designs on doing that film independently. And rest in peace, George. If it's up to me, I'm still gonna make that happen because the treatment is still as good as it was then, I think. But enough plugging. Uh, Basically, you know, they liked me from there and they needed someone to do the behind the scenes on Jason's Lyric, which they were doing down in Houston, you know, in the third ward with uh, Forrest Whitaker and Alan Payne and Jada Pinkett, yeah. Miss Will Smith now. Uh, Alan Payne. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> so that was exciting. They asked me to come down. I went down for about a week and, you know, it was great. I mean, I had just me and a cameraman and we shot all this great stuff. And then when, he came, when I came back, I actually supervised, you know, the editing as well. And I had to meet with the people in marketing at Gramercy at the time and, you know, discuss the cut and go back to the, the lab a couple of times to get a cut that they liked. And it was more learning to work with studios because when you write and when you do these kind of things, you always film as a collaborative medium. I mean, we hear it in school all the time, yeah. but out there in the world, it's, it's, it's just serious. Well, now that you're back in school, I know you're working on the script right now. Um, tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, that, that script is uh, it's another comedy because I'm trying to flex my comedy muscles and expand as a writer. And uh, it's sort of an ode to, you know, Animal House. It's a broad kind of comedy that originally we kind of write it for Nick Cannon. But, you know, I just try to write and make that stuff strong. Whoever ends up being in it, that's the casting people's job. Do you usually, though, think of a character? Think of an actor. Yeah, and, and, and I can't front Nick Cannon is, you know, picture right over there above my desk. Because it helps you to visualize, but right. you also don't want to get too married to an actor because if that person doesn't do, it. doesn't do it, then, you know, you can be crushed. And But that that's basically a comedy about a college comedy. Uh, maybe it's because I'm in college. I'm back in school. I'm feeling the need to write about it, right, which you know. But uh, it's about a, a fictional school where... They're, they have, you know, the traditional graduation, but they also have a black graduation, okay. which is something just a couple of dozen, you know, sometimes up to maybe a couple hundred students. Mm -hmm. And it, it happens d separately from the main graduation. It's not a divisive affair at all, but the new dean of the school deems it a divisive separatist event and wants to shut it down. And my story is basically about a fraternity led by Nick Cannon or whoever that saves the, you know, that is, that is going to save black graduation. Okay. Yeah. I look forward to, to, to seeing that on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Now, later in the future, once you've written and sold and made all these movies, you do have a affinity to teach. Yeah, you know, I, I have a thing where I think like the best of the, the particularly African-American cinema, the black, best of the black films have not been written yet. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a whole generation of people out there who want to become filmmakers that think that they can't do it, that they lack the tools to make films happen. And I remember when I read Spike Lee's, you know, She's Gotta Have It book, where he basically demystified the whole filmmaking process, how, how liberated I felt. And I want to give people, you know, excuse me, that, that same feel. You know, I would, I would like to teach in schools, you know, maybe even, you know, prisons, I mean, you know, summer camps, I mean, wherever. Anyone who wants to learn this, these tools of filmmaking, you know, specifically screenwriting, Mm -hmm. You know, because that's still the most democratic part of the filmmaking process. If you write a good script, you're in, you got an agent, manager, you're there tomorrow. So, so. Some, someone who, maybe someone young who's watching this and they're saying, you know, I, I write stories and I'm, and I'm a young person and want to be a screenwriter. What type of advice would you give them? Write, write and read. I mean, write all that you can, you know, I mean, on legal pads, on napkins, wherever you have to scroll your ideas, put them down on paper. Because writing isn't writing, it's rewriting. And you, you know you have to get that idea down, but refining it is where you really find the magic and the, and the gem in it. So I would say read as much stuff as you can, novels, comics, you know, whatever you're passionate about. And, and just you know, practice your craft because you know, the, the, the line between being an amateur and being in the real world is, is so thin, you have to be ready when you when you step over that you know I meet a lot of people a lot of times you say oh you know I'm a writer I'm a writer 
And I always go, well, what have you written? You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes they have ideas and ideas are well and good, but unless it's on paper, it means nothing. Right. You know, I agree. Well, thank you, Joe, so much for coming on the show. I really appreciated thank this. You. And to you, the audience, thank you again for tuning in to another edition of Filmmakers Focus.